Come and listen to my story about a man named Jed. The poor mountaineer barely kept his family fed. And then one day he was shooting at some food, and up through the ground come a bumbling crude. Oil, that is, black gold, Texas tea. Well, the first thing you know, old Jed's a millionaire. The kinfolk said, Jed, move away from there. Said, California is the place you ought to be. So they loaded up the truck and they moved to Beverly. Hills, that is, swimming pools, movie stars. The Beverly Hillbilly. <laughs> Never mind that. What's the situation up at the Clamets? How's the climate? Is there still talk of moving back home? I'm afraid so, Chief. Granny's determined to go. Stubborn little woman. <laughs> Jethro, on the other hand, wants the family to stay here. Fine, intelligent boy. <laughs> <laughs> Ellie Mae will do whatever Jed says. And what does Jed say? Well, for the time being, at least, he favors staying here. Wonderful man. <laughs> Salt of the earth. <laughs> well, that takes care of that. I'm afraid not, Chief. You still have Granny to contend with. Forget it. Without the others, what can she do? <laughs> Granny, wait! Granny, don't go! Won't do no good to beg, young'uns. I have waited my last week. I'm going home. You can't walk all the way home with this load. How are you going to push it up the hill? I'll get up enough speed going down one hill to take me up the next. <laughs> well, you ain't going alone. All right, grab a handle. Well, well Pa says I gotta find homes for my critters first. Can't you wait a week or so? I have spent my last night in Beverly Hills, and I have missed my last Dewberry Festival. I am going home. How are you gonna find your way? I'll sniff my way. The sweet William and Verbena is in blue. <laughs> but, Granny, it's around uh, 16, 1,700 miles. You ain't no chicken. You bet I ain't no chicken. When I say I'm going, I'm going. <laughs> Where are you gonna sleep? I can sleep any place. I got a warm blanket, a loaded shotgun, and a full jug. <laughs> Come on, Pa, you gotta stop her. Ellie, ain't nobody gonna stop Granny once she got her mind made up. She is kind of set in her ways. That little woman is so muley. If you throw her in the river, she'd float upstream. <laughs> Uncle Jed, Granny Bowser declares she's going to walk home. Well, the only thing to do is let her get it out of her system. Well, she can't walk all that way pushing that load. She won't. About 10 or 15 miles up the road, her feet will talk her out of it. Goodbye, everybody. I'm leaving. Now, whatever you do, don't coax or plead. The more we beg, the more she's going to enjoy going. <laughs> Trip. I'm going clean home, you know. Tell everybody howdy for us. I ain't coming back. Be sure and right. <laughs> no use trying to talk me out of it. I'm going. You got a fine day for it. <laughs> I won't be uh, around to cook and sew for you. Clean house and doctor you and all that. Now, don't you worry about us. Get some miles behind you before nightfall. <laughs> All your gnashing and wailing ain't gonna stop me. Okay, bye. <laughs> bye, Granny. Bye, Granny. <laughs> I'll be switched. Not a gnash or a wail. <laughs> <laughs> Want me to follow her on the truck? Then when I see she's getting tired, I'll just pick her up and fetch her back. No, boy, we gotta let Granny keep her pride. Well, how are we gonna get her back? Well, after she's good and tuckered out, she'll call and pretend she's worried about us. And I'll tell her we's having a miserable time without her. Then what? Well, then after a few I told you so's and served you right, she'll <laughs> offer to come back for our sake. Then I fetch her. That's right. Then maybe we'll have peace for a spell. 
Well, Paul, whilst Granny's gone, can I have some of my critters in the house for vittles? Well, I reckon it's your only chance. Thank you, Pa. Come on, everybody. We've eaten in the kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> I hope they leave some vittles. I hope they leave some kitchen. <laughs> Uncle Jed, this would be a real good time for me to go down to Mr. Drysdale's bank and ply my trade. You mean ciphering? Well, shucks, no. I give that up along with brain surgeon and double knot spying and streetcar conductor. I got me a trade now that beats them all. What's that? Being a sophisticated international playboy. <laughs> you do that down to Mr. Drydale's bank? Out front. You get dressed up and put a flower in your buttonhole and wait for some pretty girl to come by and throw herself at you. Well, that don't hardly sound like the kind of thing you'd want to make your life's work. <laughs> don't knock it till you've tried it. You want to come along? No, thanks. I can learn you to be a playboy in no time at all. I believe I'll pass it up. It's a heap of fun. There's some awful pretty girls down there. Forget it, boy. Man my age got to watch your step. <laughs> okay. Funny thing, when you get to be old enough to watch your step, you ain't going nowhere. <laughs> Mind your manners, everybody. Fiddles will be ready in a minute. Hey, Ellie Mae, you're gonna have to get these critters out of my bachelor pad. Out of your what? Bachelor pad. That's where us sophisticated international playboys does our entertaining. Since when you one of them? Well, since Miss Jane told me how. It's easy. If I just stand in front of the bank, this flower in my buttonhole. Well, this tells the girls I'm a sophisticated playboy. Well, don't tell me nothing. That's because you're a dumb old country girl. But when a sophisticated city woman sees this, look out. Well, I might fetch eight or ten of them rascals home for grits and gopher gravy. Well, they can have whatever's left. Ellen May, you ain't feeding them critters my playboy vittles, are you? I'm feeding them granny's grits and gopher gravy. Well, gee whiz, couldn't you give them something plain and save the fancy stuff for my company? Well, you can give your company turnip greens and sow belly. Granny left a big bowl in the icebox. Oh, well, why didn't you say so? They might be playboys that serves grits and gravy in their bachelor pads, but I bet you there ain't many that can come up with turnip greens and sow belly. <laughs> All right, now. Y'all mind your manners, but don't dawdle neither, because Granny might just turn around and come right back any minute. <laughs> Too soon, neither. <laughs> Howdy, ma'am. Excuse me, I reckon you didn't see my flower. Hey, don't you know what I am? Yes, you're a creep. <laughs> no, ma'am, I'm a sophisticated international playboy. <laughs> oh, gone. Must have got a hold of a bad flower. <laughs> Jethro, what are you doing here? Trying to be a playboy. Playboy? Yeah, Miss Jane told me how, and the other day I got a girl just like that. But today... Excuse me, yonder comes one now. What is he talking about? Well, it, it's a long story, but the other day I arranged for one of our girl employees to find his playboy pose irresistible. Well, arrange for another one. If he gets unhappy with Beverly Hills, I'm really cooked. What's the matter? Ain't you a city woman? Can't you see I'm a sophisticated international... <laughs> see what I mean? And that ain't nothing. I've been mean mouth, face slap, shin kick, foot stomp, and dog bit. Now, wait, Jethro. I'm going to try my luck in front of Mr. Cushing's bank. Oh, no, no, no. I, I'm sure your luck will change. Don't you agree, Miss Hathaway? Oh, absolutely. Be, be patient, Jethro. The right girl will come along any moment. Stay right here, playboy. <laughs> Well, 
dollars at the Commerce Bank. And there's our masher. That hayseed? He fits the description they gave him in headquarters. <laughs> He's pretty big. Maybe I'd better make the arrest. I'm supposed to get some evidence first. Let him make a pass at me. You wait here. I can handle him. Uh, howdy, ma'am. <laughs> heck with this. I'm going home and get something to eat. <laughs> howdy, ma'am. Well, hi, handsome. Hey! You must know a playboy when you see one, huh? I sure do. <laughs> you want to come up to my bachelor pad? That's all I need to hear. Okay, Buster, let's go. <laughs> you really are anxious, aren't you? Wait do you see the vittles we got. Greens, sow belly, pone, sorghum. You're not getting away from me. You really must like greens and sow belly. <laughs> Boy, did my luck change. <laughs> Doggies, I knew she had up a head of steam, but I sure thought she'd give out by now. Her or that old wheelbarrow one. I'm getting kind of worried. Me too. Maybe I'd best send Jethro out looking. Well, Jethro ain't back from Playboy. <laughs> well, there ain't nothing we can do then but sit here and wait. So you want to play the grits and gravy? Yeah, that'd be fine. There you are. Why, don't it look scrumptious? Don't it, though? I can't figure out why old Duke didn't finish it. <laughs> you know, worrying about your granny has kind of took my appetite away. <laughs> hate to think of that poor little woman trudging down the road, pushing that heavy wheelbarrow. They'll be dancing, they'll be singing, all the bells will be ringing, they'll be dancing, they'll be singing when she comes. <laughs> Well, I don't know where home is for you, lady, but for me, it's up this side road, and I'm awful late. Well, where in tarnation are we? This is the end of nowhere. <laughs> no, we're just a couple of miles out of Las Vegas. Las Vegas? What's that? <laughs> you never heard of Vegas? I ain't never heard of Las, neither. <laughs> Vegas is a pretty famous place. Is it anywhere near Sibley? <laughs> I'm afraid I never heard of Sibley. Well, that's just a hoot and a holler from Mincy. You know Mincy. Sorry. Oh, sure you do. That's where the river road cuts off to Bug Tussle. Bug Tussle? That rang a bell, didn't it? I'm afraid not. You ain't never been to Bug Tussle? No. Oh, you poor man. Tell me, do you like fun and music and bright lights and excitement? Sure. Then you go to Bug Tussle on a Saturday night. <laughs> they don't even blow out the lantern till 9 or 9.30. <laughs> You're kidding. There's a room in back of the feed store. They play checkers for money. <laughs> no. Bug Tussle sounds a little too rough for me. <laughs> Las Vegas is more my speed. <laughs> well, uh, I sure wish I could drive you on in, but I'm awful late. But you won't have any trouble getting a, getting a ride because there's a lot of traffic on this road. I hope I didn't scare you off Bug Tussle. <laughs> oh, no. I'll get over there sometime. I hope you enjoy Las Vegas. Do you think they have a telephone there? <laughs> I'm pretty sure they have. <laughs> That's good. I want to call my family. They's probably having a miserable time without me. I hope. <laughs> Granny, is that you? Oh, hello, Jethro. Where are you? Well, what are you doing in jail? Mashing <laughs> <Nice and> what? <laughs> What'd you do, step on her foot? <laughs> Boy, you ain't making no sense. 
All right, I'll have Mr. Drysdale to come over and help you. All right, I'll tell him to bring a bail bucket. <laughs> Thanks for getting me out of jail. Now I can't wait to get out of Beverly Hills and go back home. Jethro, wait! Don't use that kind of language! No, you can't be serious! You want to be a playboy, don't you? Of course, and for that you need beautiful girls, bright lights, excitement. Hey, if you can't find all that back in the hills. Ha! Huh, you ain't seen Bug Tussle on Saturday night. <laughs> Bug Tussle? <laughs> yeah, and the girls there don't throw you in jail when you ask them over for greens and sow belly. <laughs> I'm through talking. I'm on Granny's side now. And just as soon as I can get packed, I'm going to jump on that truck and see if I can catch up with her. Catch up with her? Yeah, she left this morning on foot. All by herself? No, she took her wheelbarrow. <laughs> to see if he could pick up a trace of Granny. He's got Duke with him. Oh, they'll find her. I know they will. Well, if they don't, we'll just load up and head for the hills. Oh, Mr. Clappett. <laughs> don't worry. We'll find her on the way home. Oh, don't talk like that, please. <laughs> Calm down, Mr. Drysdale. She'll be all right. Who? Granny. <laughs> yes, yes. Well, don't you leave, Mr. Clappett. You stay right here, and Miss Hathaway and I will look for her. Indeed we will. We'll alert the police, the highway patrol. We'll hire detectives. We'll get a helicopter and offer a big reward. Well, that's nice of you, but you don't have to go to all that trouble. What's a little trouble when we're talking about your money? <laughs> Granny. <laughs> well, I declare, you are so wrought up, you don't know what you're saying. Now, you come on right over here, and you sit down, and you have a nice cup of coffee. But we've got to find Granny. It'll be dark pretty soon. Oh, she can take care of herself. Chances are she's already found some nice, quiet spot to bed down for the night. Send Jethro on the truck to fetch it? Oh, you can't do that. It's over 300 miles. Just a minute, Granny. 300 miles? Man, that's what you call walking. <laughs> if she hadn't been pushing that wheelbarrow, she'd be plumb home. <laughs> Hello? Somebody get me out of here. I want to come home. <laughs> Mr. Clampett. Uh, Hello, Granny. Jane Hathaway here. Now, listen carefully. Go to the airport and wait there. Mr. Drysdale and I will fly up and get you. That's real good, Bessie. All you need is somebody to work the pedals for you. <laughs> Allie Mae, what are you doing? Well, Bess is practicing to help you drive back home. 
I ain't going back home. Mr. Drysdale done give me an office job down to his bank. When? Last night when he fetched Granny back from Las Vegas. I'm gonna have my name on the door, secretaries and everything. What you gonna be doing? What everybody else does that works in offices, I reckon. Sit at my desk, take coffee breaks, <laughs> go to the water cooler, watch the clock, stuff like that. Well, how about getting me one of them jobs? Sorry, Mr. Drysdale says I got the only one they is. I'm a... What you call this? Uh, junior Executive Research Consultant. <laughs> Chief, I wonder if Junior Executive Research Consultant might have been an unfortunate choice of titles. So I'll give him a new title. Did you get him some girls from the secretarial pool? This is the secretarial pool. I simply put Jethro's name on the door. <laughs> That should take care of our frustrated playboy. That leaves our frustrated queen of the road. Oh, don't, don't worry about her. Granny was so exhausted and bewildered by Las Vegas, I don't think she'll want to hit the road again for a long time. I tell you, Jed, I used to think Beverly Hills was full of nuts. But that Las Vegas has got them all, Bill. What do they do that's so nutty? Well... First of all, they got hundreds and hundreds of these little picture machines all over the town. Picture machines, huh? Yeah. You drop in some money, haul down on this pump handle, <laughs> and little pictures goes to spinning around. I see. And, Jed, people stand around just pouring their money into them things. Quite a fine picture. Until they stop spinning. And when you do, guess what you have spent your money to see? What? Little bitty pictures of some sorry looking fruit. <laughs> yeah. Lemons, cherries, plums, oranges. And they ain't even specially good pictures. <laughs> but how much does it cost to look at these pictures? Oh, they got them all prices. I watched one fella, he was pumping in nickels, turned around, and there's another fella spending dollars to see the same sorry picture. Well, it does seem a mite frog brain. Uh, didn't nobody complain? None to speak of. I was there a good while, and I only seen two or three of them get their money back. Jed Clampett speaking. Oh, hello, Jethro. Well, just a minute, I'll see. Uh, Jethro wants to know, can he fetch home his secretaries for middle? Sure. Fetch away, Jethro. <laughs> Come on, let's go. There's a truck up the street, Yonner. Y'all pile on and we'll go up to my bachelor pad. <laughs> Any more girls in there? All right, Buster, let's go. Oh, it's you again. Well, I see you didn't learn your lesson. Well, this time you won't get out so easily. Oh, just a minute. Them girls is all my secretaries. Uh, sure they are. <laughs> well, it's true. And I'm what you call a junior executive. You're what you call under arrest. <laughs> it's a wonderful feeling to have everybody happy again. <laughs> if I do say so myself, I think I handle this whole situation with intelligence and... She's on her way. I thought everything was fine. What happened? Well, what started her off was cooking a whole table full of company vittles and then Jethro not showing up. <laughs> if you ask me, she can't wait to get back to Las Vegas. Las Vegas? Well, last night she thought it was the craziest place she'd ever seen. Still think so. Figures to turn it into another bug tussle and get rich. <laughs> get rich? Granny says that anybody who'll spend good money to look at fruit pictures will pay a fortune to learn checkers. <laughs> but 
Now it's time to say goodbye to Jed and all his kin. They would like to thank you folks for kindly dropping in. You're all invited back next week to this locality to have a heapin' helpin' of their hospitality. Hillbilly, that is. Set a spell. Take your shoes off. Y'all come back now, here. This has been a Filmways presentation.